Howdy folks, Jake here with BanjoBenClark.com, the site that teaches you guitar, mandolin, banjo, all sorts of other fun and interesting things. And uh, today we're going to talk about flat picks, also known as plectrums. And uh, there's, there's actually a lot of thought and theory that goes into choosing a flat pick. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer, I'll start off by saying that, but uh, everyone kind of has a... Um, a different opinion about what the perfect flat pick is and some people like myself change their mind all the time you know I always say I change my pick about as often as I change my underwear once every couple weeks so uh, bear with us here we're gonna talk about things like um, material how the different materials uh, will change the sound and feel and performance of the pick we're gonna talk about the shapes and sizes of the picks uh, how that will uh, affect you know, the playability and the sound, uh, as well as the thicknesses, you know, that certainly has a lot to do with it too. But we're also going to talk about kind of some um, subjective things, you know, in addition to all those objective categories I just mentioned, there are some subjectivities when it comes to, you didn't know I knew that word, did you? I'm not sure if I used it correctly. I hope so. Uh, but when we get into the subjective nature of a pick, uh, you know, different folks obviously prefer different picks for different reasons and um, a lot of that can do with with how you hold the pick the angle at which you attack the strings with the pick even like the grip of the pick how the pick feels in your fingers you know how how well you're able to hang on to it things like that so bear with us here we're going to just take this kind of category at a time and we're just going to talk a whole lot more about picks than you ever wanted to know i'm sure so <laughs> stick with us and we'll be right back So it's often said, your left hand is what you know, and your right hand is who you are. And uh, I'm going to apply that sentiment a little bit to our, our first topic, which is subjectivity. Um, what I mean by that is, I, I noticed early on that some of my heroes would be using a certain kind of pick. And I would buy that pick, and it seemed like my tone was nothing like theirs. Uh, I would find that I could achieve... A much similar much more similar tone to what they were getting with a completely different pick and so there's a lot of personal um, interfacing with with the pick and, and the guitar uh, simple things such as if you strike the string at a very fat angle you know uh, early on I listened to a lot of David Greer incredible player still listen to him a lot and uh, he could get this real crisp, light floating tone, uh, still very good full tone, but uh, he just had such a singular sound. You knew it was him when you listened to him. And he would strike the string at a very flat angle, which I wasn't used to. I've since worked on that for effect when I want it to be there, but it's still not the way I default when I play. So when he, him using that very fat round pick could get a much brighter sound than I could with it. When I use the fat round pick, it would dull the tone out a lot compared to what he would get. And so to demonstrate that right off the bat, um, I'm gonna strike the strings at a flat angle. So what I mean by that, if this is the string, the pick's going to be hit it, hitting it completely perpendicularly, okay? Um, that's gonna give you the brightest tone uh, of any pick, it doesn't matter what the pick you're using is, if you go at a flat angle, your tone's going to be brighter than if you go uh, playing on the edge of the pick at, at a sharp, a steeper angle. So um, I'll start with a flat angle, and then I'll slowly adjust to a steep angle, then I'll move back to a flat angle, you can hear the difference. And back to flat. So. You could, hopefully you could hear it started, uh, you know, sharp and crisp and then moved to kind of a warmer, uh, smoother sound and then went back to sharp and crisp. That's because I started flat, tilted my pick down at an angle, then came back to a flat angle like this, okay? So uh, that's not the only uh, subjective thing you do to change tone. A, a lot of it too is, is hand placement. So what I find is more comfortable most of the time is if I have a slight bend to my hand here like a, I've got a little bit of an angle going on with my wrist 
and um, that's going to affect the tone. So it's a combination of things. You got to find what technique feels the most natural where you can relax. That's the biggest thing. Find a technique that allows you to relax and find a pick that you can hold comfortably relaxed and that engages the string in a way where you can stay relaxed. That's the key to the whole thing. And then, you know, what the pick is, is, is really secondary to all that. You can, I, I know with me personally, uh, if, if I use some of the higher end picks, uh, which I love and do use from time to time, but uh, there are certain ones that some people use to incredible effect, some of my heroes, that if I use them for too long a time, I start locking up because they don't uh, engage the string in the way that my hand needs to feel to stay loose, if that makes sense. Uh, also, uh, not only, you know, the angle of your pick, if you're a planter, you know, if you plant your pinky, um, and I'm not saying any of these ways are right or wrong because there's great players do it all different ways. Uh, also, there's, you know, some players that will rest their hand on the bridge pins. All of that stuff will add up to changing the way the pick hits the string, and that's going to change the tone. So uh, that, that's one side of it. And I also mentioned grip, you know, how the pick feels in your hand. That's going to play a big part in it too. Uh, I personally like a pick that, that grabs my fingers, and it also has a little drag when it hits the string. See, so uh, I feel that if I've got a pick that resists the string just a little bit, a little bit I can relax more and let the pick do some of that labor. And I'm not having to try to push the pick as hard to get a, a snappy response off the string when I need it. So that's just me personally, what I found. Uh, like I said, there are a lot better players than me that do it, uh, you know, completely, probably have completely opposite thoughts on stuff like that. So those are things you just want to play with and figure out. Uh, another reason to choose a pick, this will be the last thing before we move on to our head to head comparison. We've got a lot of picks to go through and we're going to do head to head comparisons with different shapes and sizes and materials. Um, but, but the last thing is wear patterns. So how long a pick will last, uh, is, is one thing that might be a determining factor for you. And, and, uh, we'll talk about that when we get into to the different materials, at least based on my experience and, and also how the pick wears. For example, uh, I've got some tortoise shell, genuine tortoise shell I'll be showing you and then a buffalo horn substitute, which they're both organic materials. And when the buffalo horn is polished up and, and, and in good smooth playing surface condition, so to speak, it sounds remarkably similar to the tortoise shell. The difference being, it doesn't take long at all for that buffalo horn pick to get so chewed up and chipped up that it's just scratching and grating on the strings and you, you almost can't even get through the strings with it. Uh, whereas the tortoise shell will stay much smoother for much longer. You still have to dr keep picks dressed up if you're going to use them for a long time. But uh, anyway, that would be uh, another thing to consider. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to get all geared up here and, and start our head-to-head our -head materials and shapes and thicknesses comparison directly. <laughs> 